Curtis. And he's going to get us that uh, one that's uh, a little over the 800 that somebody caught last week. <laughs> Somewhere around 820. Just to beat the record. Just to make sure we beat it. Go for like 1200. <laughs> 1200. Oh, right. Oh, big okay. time. Let's go for a big one. Oh, we're not fooling around here. <laughs> You would expect, being that these are big giant dinosaur fish, that when they hit it, they just tore off of it and grabbed it and got it. But they don't. And the reason they don't is because of how they feed. A sturgeon, we call it a bite, but it's not really true because a sturgeon doesn't actually bite. They can't open their mouth and close it and actually bite like a catfish or a trout or a salmon or your neighbor's dog. They're gonna ah. Their mouth is built like a big tube, like a vacuum hose. So not only do they not bite, but they can't see anything that they're eating. They got their eyes, they're flat on the bottom, they're a bottom feeding fish, their mouth is down on the bottom of that flat part of them. And their eyes are up on the top. They can't see their mouth. So the fact that the water is brown and muddy and you can't see six inches doesn't really matter. Because even if it was five foot deep and crystal clear on a bright sunny day, he still couldn't see what he's eating because he can't see his mouth. So they feed entirely by smell and taste the river currents. They can find these little chub, these little live fish down there by feeling the vibrations of them as they swim. They can even, they have sensory receptors in their nose that can even pick up the electromagnetic field given off by their heart firing. That little heart and that little tiny fish beating sends out an electrical impulse and the sturgeon can feel it or see it or sense it. It knows it's there based on that heartbeat. They're incredibly sensitive. In the fall when the salmon are spawning, those big fish are down there and they're sucking up. Salmon don't spawn in a clump of eggs. They spawn them, their eggs come out single. They float down the river and those fish eat them one at a time, sucking them out of the water. They can find a single salmon egg in 80 feet of water. Unbelievable how sensitive they are. So people see it, you know, you put a little piece of eel on like that, and, oh, what the heck? But that little piece of eel, he'll find that just as good as you will a big piece of eel, but he'll have a lot easier time getting that in his mouth. Because I thought that too. Huh. Mm -hmm. oh. So, the way that they feed is always up into the current. The scent from our baits is going downstream with the current. And so the fish will get on that scent trail, they'll smell it, they'll come up on top of it, and right in front of that mouth, there's these four little barbels. They look like little whiskers. And those barbels have chemical receptors in them, like your tongue. They can taste with those. They rub those on the bait, and oh, that's a nice tasting hooligan, eel, whatever we got out there. And when he goes to eat it, he'll extend that big tube of a mouth down over top of it. And on a big fish, that tube will be this big around and that long, and it'll hang out like an elephant's trunk if you pull it out. And you'll hang that thing over top of the bait and he flushes his gills and creates a vacuum of water going up the tube and out the, out the gills. And you gotta think, if it was just a little piece of an eel or whatever down there, he'd <gasps> hoover that thing up and move on to the next bit. But we got 28 ounces of lead and a line attached to ours, so it doesn't go up into that tube as easily as the food normally would. And we can't get around that, we need to have a line attached to it. <laughs> That's how we're going to bring them in. <laughs> yeah. We're not just feeding them, we're here to catch them. And so, as a result, quite often when you get a bite, you know, just look like this. And that could be a fish that's, you know, 10 feet long, weighs a thousand pounds. You don't know, it could also be a fish that's this big and, oh, he's cute, right? Get a nice little picture of him. You never know from the bite how big the fish is going to be. When we get a bite, there's three ways that we'll react to the rods. First of all, we're going to number the rods, one, two, three. And if we get a fish that hits it a couple times like that, like we had right off the hop there on that eel, we're not going to do anything with the rod. We're going to leave the rod in the water. We're not going to take it out of the holder. We're not going to start moving it and jerking it around. Because um, that fish is down there. He's gotten a couple of pulls. Oh, he didn't get it. Lots of times they'll circle around, they get back on the scent trail, follow it up on top of the bait, and they'll try it again. Sometimes it takes them five or six tries before they actually get that bait up into their mouth. 
And sometimes they'll sit there and they'll work on it, and they work on it, and they work on it, and they're biting, and they're biting, and they're hitting like this, trying to suck that bait up. And so if we get a bite like that, where the fish is hitting it, and he's hitting it, and he's hitting it, but there's no additional tension. After each one of those yanks, it returns to this, I call this river tension. The river pushing on the line creates that bend in the rod, the bow in the line. And as long as after each bite, it's returning to river tension, we're not gonna be setting the hook because this here is not him touching it. That's just the suction created him trying to inhale it up. So we get a bite where he's hitting and he's hitting and he's hitting it and I'll tell you what to do. I say take it out of the rod holder really gently. Take it out gently. So you just pop that rod out like that and you keep the rod tip down nice and low. You don't want to move it. If you do that and you move that bait six inches, four inches, all of a sudden it's not under that tube anymore. It's up here and he can't see that it's gone there. So it's really important when he's hitting it like that and I tell you to take it out nice and gentle, nice and gentle, nice and gentle, pop that rod tip, the rod out and keep the rod tip down. And you'll feel him yank, yank, yanking on it. And sometimes it's really soft, really subtle, like just a little pulse. Sometimes he's hammering on it. But again, if it's returning to river tension, we're just holding that rod really still. We don't want to move it up, move it down. We want to hold it right where it's at, really nice and still like that, and wait for that tension in between the yanks to start to build. We call that a building bite, where the tension is building between each of those yanks. They get he's pulling harder, 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 and when we get three or four of them building bites, we're going to set the hook. And when you set the hook on a sturgeon, it's not like we're setting fishing or bass fishing or trout fishing or anything where you, you know, hey, I got one. You lift up on the rod and you got him. With the sturgeon, you have to whack him. And not just up in the air, I want you to turn your body and swing that rod tip as far as you can. A lot is happening when you're setting the hook. First of all, the line doesn't go straight down to the weight. It can't, or that weight would just flutter up off the bottom. There has to be a bow in the line. Not only that, but the bottom here is all muddy, silty muck. And he got 28 ounces of lead that's stuck into that muck. Not only that, but he's got slack now in the leader because it's going up into his mouth. So when you're setting the hook, you're straightening out that bow in the line, unsticking 28 ounces of lead from the mud, straightening out that leader and now trying to bury that hook into this crazy tough cartilage tube and there's no bone there's no muscle tissue there's nothing in there that's really soft there's no teeth there's nothing it's just a cartilage tube and it's tough like a tire you imagine trying to poke a hook through a tire how much effort it would take and that's what it's like trying to get this hook into these fish and I don't think on the hook set you're ever gonna actually bury the hook to the bend in that tube, especially on a big fish. What you're gonna do is you're gonna get, they're a very fine pointed hook and you're gonna get just that hook point started, all right? So when you set the hook, oh, at some point when you come back, you're gonna hit the fish and it's gonna stop. And if you just drop the rod and reel in the slack line to hit him again, eight out of 10 times he's gonna fall off. Especially on a big fish, you're almost guaranteed that that hook is just gonna fall right out of that cartilage tube. So when you come back and you hit the fish, I want you to turn your body and keep pulling on it. Keep that tension. Hold the hook point into that tube. Hold it in and then start reeling with the rod bent, holding that hook point in. Hold it in tight all the way around. And it's hard to reel. When, there's, when that fish is pulling and there's tension on it, it's hard to reel. But you haven't fought him for very long yet, so you're still nice and strong, so it's okay. You can do it. <laughs> And once you get under tension, you get reeled around and you get square to the fish and get the butt of that rod right into your hip, now you can lean on them. And it's not a finesse game where, oh, we got to let them run and, oh, we got to take in the line. You're pulling as hard as you can the whole time. Don't worry about letting them run. These drags are set to like 20 pounds of drag pressure. He'll pull like a mother before that line will come off the reel. Well, maybe you should be hooked on that first one then. Yeah, 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 that is lucky. <laughs> the third way that we do it, is sometimes you're sitting next to the rod and it's going and I'll be yelling at you, hit him, hit him, hit him, get him, and hit him right out of the rod holder. And you get bite, 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 and that rod's going before you can even get there. I'll be yelling just to hit him right out of the holder. And if we're hitting him out of the holder, what I don't want you to do is to take the rod out first and then hit him. What I want you to do is to come right from the holder and into the fish, all in one motion. And it's the same deal. Whack, hit the fish, turn your body, pull on him, reel, 
reel down, lots of tension, lots of tension, lots of tension, get that butt of the rod in there and then lean on. No, uh, no, it's not like we're tarpon fishing where you want to hit them three or four times. One good set and hold that hook point in there. So I guess with the weight of the fish, um, it's going to do the rest of the embedding. That's right. As, yeah. as he starts twisting and turning and bucking and running and pulling, that's what's going to work that hook point in to the bend. Right. I've landed fish, got them up to the boat to pull them in, and it's still only halfway. Wow. In. And that's, that's how tough that mouth is, hey? And that's with big fish too? Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, that's now, all I know about sturgeon fish. All right. <laughs> yeah, okay. So now, now what we want to see... Then you see, just kind of hang on and hope oh, for the best, right? We want to see it in action now. There we go. Okay, people, so you see this rod here? Keep your eye on it. Yeah, Look at the... Day. Watch the tip. Okay? My tea, go my smoke, and I'm fishing. <laughs> hey, Don, play smoke, catch fish. <laughs> Like you said, yeah, they make that circle eh, and we shouldn't come back. Is that a cup of tea I see sitting over there? Mm -hmm. That's my tea. That's my white gold. <laughs> Ron's going to get to cast one. You realize that this is a real privilege that you get to do this. Straight back? Hey, you want to go just kind of 45? 45? Maybe on the thumb. Okay. I'll let you do it again. Okay. Okay. We get the feel of that. Pretty heavy, is it? Yes, it is. And my tennis oval felt that. Ah, uh, yeah. A lot different than using the ones for the river. <laughs> and he throws it like we do lures. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I felt that. Yeah. So what's this, our fourth move? Uh, this is our fourth spot, yeah. Yeah, fourth spot. We're going to try here. Oh, 
go to our last spot. Curtis is the bait. Well, I guess teaching how to run the boat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good thing you showed. <laughs> <laughs> Fish on? Well, not yet. It's a real live genuine bite. There was? <laughs> okay. So this is where we wait for him to do a U-turn and come back? Yeah, hit it a couple of times and hit it again. So hopefully he likes it enough, he's going to come back and try again. That's the left right, right? Or, or grab one of the other two. They're really not, they're not far apart from each other. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd be happy with one on yours, Ron. That's that's that'll make my day. Come on back, baby. You liked it. Yeah, but let's find out just how much he liked it. Yeah. Show us. Yep. Baby tight. Whoa. You okay? Are you okay, Ron? Oh, yeah. oh okay. You sound like you're gonna go overboard. Oh no. I'm All right. My knees on here. Yeah, keep nice and tight. Well, he's keeping it tight. There he is. Look at, oh. oh, nice three footer. Maybe four.
Can you smell it? Okay. Oh, step back towards me. Back up that way. Get that rod up nice and tight to the line. Drag it down quickly. You did it, Ron! He's on the boat yet. He's on the boat yet. He's in the boat. <laughs> hey, we got one! All, All right. right. <sighs> Let's see that smile now. Can you smell it? Oh, I smell it. Oh, <laughs> right, look at that baby. Let's have a look at this puppy. Yeah, He's nice upside down right now. <laughs> look at a mouth on him. Oh, God. What do you think, Don? <laughs> hey, Steve? <laughs> Mike? Look at the mouth on this. Yeah, we'll get him turned good. over there in a minute. Even Curtis look happy. Look at the smile on this one. We got Oh, it smells yeah. better already. Can you smell it? Yes, of course we can. Can you smell it? That's the skunk. That's the skunk. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, right. Yeah. Well, that made my day just to have him bring one in. Oh. Okay, so what we want to do, lift that little flap up in the front there. Yep. We're going to give a little bucket of water here, a little drink. Keep him happy. Tag kid out here. Oh, a what? Tag and kid. A tag, so you tag him. Well, we're gonna see if he's got a tag first. Oh. Oh, the electronic ones, yeah. Need there he is, ladies and gentlemen. There's the prehistoric animal. Yeah, he looks uh, it. And he looks it. Yeah. Well, he really had that one because there was no holding the rod okay. and you just okay. set that hook. So he does have a tag. He's he does, got a eh? number, yeah. All okay. Right. He's been tagged. So now you uh, will what? Keep track of this? We're going to write the tag number down. Mm -hmm. Under a recapture. This is kilometer 93. Yes, we scanned them. So tell me something. Yes. Did you pull that thing in here? Yes, like, I did. Like by yourself? All by myself. Oh, God damn. And he's strong. <laughs> oh, they are strong. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do if it gets bigger. That's you not go. a very little fish. I mean, that's... Right on the end of his nose there like that, so right on the end of that middle of that ball of his nose. Got him finished. We'll do this side angle, right on the, along the side. So he's exactly 129 centimeters, which is four foot three. Four oh, foot three. All right. Four foot three. 129. <laughs> and the girth. We're going to go around him here behind those fins. 48. 48. If he was in inches. 18 and a half inch girth. 129. Hold on, hold that. Yep. Hold that. Well, I guess we're going to have a serious, serious time getting rid of that smile. Look at <laughs> yeah, it. Oh, it's oh, not oh, going oh, anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, just shaking his eyes. <laughs> what a great feeling. Biggest fish ever. Okay, that's all the info Damn. we need from him for tagging. Looks back! Geez, for you guys, it's just not fishing, eh? You got work to do too, eh? It's all part of the fun. Yeah. I love the tagging <laughs> if, thing. If we're, gonna, if we're gonna catch him and do that, and bring him out of the water and do this too, we might as well <coughs> do some, have some good out of it. Oh, out for of it, sure. Right? First of all, first thing I want you to do, I'll show you a couple before we take them up for pictures here, I'll show you a couple of little things about these fish. First of all, feel their, feel their, their head, the top of their head. 
it's yeah. solid bone. There's, right. It's like a turtle shell. There's no tissue on top of the bone. It's exposed bone. Right. And this here, those are bone. Those are the growth lines of the bone. You can see those gray lines. Yep. Mm -hmm. And those plates, they just get bigger and bigger. I mean, I don't know. I mean, aside from a turtle, I don't know what other animal has the skull on the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These here, these are his scoots. And those aren't scales, those are bone. They're bony plates. And you can feel them. And sometimes they get, he's not too bad in terms of sharp. He's got a couple of sharp oh, ones yeah. here. These ones along the side here can get quite, can get oh, quite yeah. sharp. Like claws sticking out of them. And he's got five rows. He's got a row on his back, his dorsal scoots. And you can see there he's got some jagged ones. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Feel these ones back here, feel those ones. Wow. And he's got two lateral scoots and then two on either side of his belly. Oh, one yeah. on either side of his belly. Two total. Yeah, yeah. If you look at his gill flap cover here. Oh yeah. That's bone. You can see the Yeah. And that's uh protecting his gills. He's actual has an actual bone plate covering his gills. Okay. I don't know of another fish that has act like a bone gill flap cover. And these two triangular pieces here Crap. are also solid bone. And this is like his skid plate. When oh. he's swimming around on the bottom of the river, these bones here are the lowest part of the fish and this is what's gonna rub on the bottom so he doesn't get his belly all cut up and scratched. Right. Okay, if we look at his nose here, all these little paw prints yeah. looking things, yeah. those are all sensory receptors and he can vibrations this is where he can feel that uh, electromagnetic field he can pick that up with his nose and you can see from here he can't see his mouth right yeah of course yeah. right and look at his eyes his eyes will almost glow like yeah. an LED light inside of them oh. we're seeing down deep where it's really dark and if we just open his mouth up a little tiny bit here oh it's okay it's okay oh, yeah you saw that coming eh? I feel them all tense up it looks like he's got a tongue in there yeah, yeah. That big, and what that is, it's not a tongue, it's actually a big muscle. And that's his crushing plate. Ah. And if we pull his mouth out a little bit, you can see it's, this is real hard right here. Yeah, yeah. And the way that crushing plate works is it gets, it sucks the food up and it doesn't, you never hook these fish, not never, it's very rare to hook these fish deep because they don't inhale it into their stomach. They only take the bait in that far, that's it. this far in their mouth into where that crushing plate is. And there's no teeth, there's no nothing in here that can chew on it. But that crushing plate, it grinds it like this. And that's the action that it has. It hits front first and back. And so it'll grind it and force it down into their stomach. Just the food. Yeah, Just yeah, the yeah. food, yeah. Right. And here's this tube I was talking about. Wonk. Look at that. See how wow, far that comes out? Yeah. And when it's out like this, it can't close. It kind of locks. So he can't reach down and pick anything up. It just creates that big open yeah, yeah. vacuum. And it doesn't close until it comes right. back like that. Now what's the chance of getting a weight on this? Well, we can't weigh them. No? No. Okay. All right. This fish will be in the round 60, 65 pounds. Okay, good. It's pretty empty. So what I'm gonna want you to do here, you're gonna grab them real tight around the rest of the tail. Yep. And then find a balance point here with your thumb on the back side or your thumb underneath them like that. That's nice, good. All right. Whoa. <laughs> okay. And lift and then go right into that back corner there. Go into the back corner of the boat. Get some light on you. There we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Nice. My big surgeon. <laughs> yeah, and a nice background too. Oh, nice. Beauty. Nice. We got All her. Right. We got her. Yeah. Now head first into the river nice and gentle and just let her go. All right, here we go. Yep. You want to come over or watch? I'm going to come in when you, there we go. Don't hold them backwards, just let them go. In a way she went. Well, are you proud of yourself? Uh, I feel awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel great. Oh, great. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that was oh, the prize. Yeah. That, that was Curtis, that, that was the prize. Thank you. Well done. That was a thank beauty. You. Yeah. Good oh, great on. Yeah. Just to see him bring that in, that was my prize. Now you have a permanent smile. <laughs> and we got it documented too. And documented. Nice work. Wow! 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 wow. Oh, great on. <laughs>
And what was the length of that? Was it four? Four uh, feet three. Four, four foot three. With an 18 inch, yeah, uh, an 18, 18 and a half inch girth. Yeah. At approximately 60 pounds. Huh. Nice. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Biggest fish ever. Biggest fish. Biggest one before, 34 and a half pound salmon. That knocked that off the scale. So is, <laughs> so is your cheeks hurting? Uh, <laughs> they will be. They will be. <laughs> oh. Oh, what a prize. This was awesome. What a prize. Yep. Boy, am I glad that we hold that rod in our left hand. Yeah. Because this elbow would not have been able to hold that no, thing. No. Nope. How was it for real? It was okay. It was okay. I did notice. Oh, hold it for a second. Okay, get my uh, yeah. like straighten it out a bit. Okay, get it going again. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure I'm gonna feel this when I get home. <laughs> wow. But that's okay. That's a good pain. Yeah, I can handle that. Oh yeah. I, even I would look at you and say, "Suck it up." That's right. <laughs> Suck it up. Yeah. Oh, right on.